Thanks for listening to English Go podcast. To listen without advertisements or to read episode transcripts, visit englishgo.co.uk for more information. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promo rate for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. There's never been a faster or easier way to start your weight loss journey than with Plush Care. Plush Care accepts most insurance plans and gives you online access to board certified physicians who can prescribe FDA approved weight loss medications like Wigovi and ZepBound for those who qualify. Take charge of your health and speak with a board certified physician about a weight loss plan that's right for you. Get started today at plushcare.com slash weight loss. That's plushcare.com slash weight loss. plushcare.com slash weight loss. Quality sleep is essential. That's why the Sleep Number Smart Bed is designed for your ever evolving sleep needs. Need a bed that's firmer or softer on either side? Helps you sleep at a comfortable temperature? Sleep Number Smart Beds let you individualize your comfort so you sleep better together. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now, during our lowest prices of the season, shop the Sleep Number Smart Bed starting at $999 for a limited time. Prices higher in Alaska and Hawaii. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. I'm going to get a little bit technical in this episode just so I can tell you about my new purchase. Well, it's a new purchase, but it's something old. So it's like a new old purchase, a purchase of something used. Um, recently, I have bought another laptop. So I've got one laptop and it's an Apple laptop. It's a, a MacBook laptop and it's very nice. And it was ridiculously expensive. Um, it's the most money I've ever spent on a laptop. It was close to £2,000. Um, and I didn't want to buy one that expensive, but there were many reasons why I ended up buying this particular laptop. Anyway, um, because it's so expensive, I'm worried about taking it out of the house. You know, if I don't have any insurance on it, if I if I lose it, if I drop it and it breaks, it's you know it's game over. I I would need to spend another two thousand pounds to buy one of these laptops, and that's just too much money. There's no way I'd <laughs> there's no way I'd buy it again um, because it costs so much money. So I'm hoping that I can keep this laptop for a very long time. Um, well, I say a very long time. You don't, you can't keep laptops for a very long time, can you? Really, they're sort of out to date off after a while, out of date, out of date. That's right, isn't it? Outdated. That's better. Outdated after a, a while. So I don't know. When I say a really long time, I mean like mm, maybe like six, seven years, perhaps. Um, but we shall see. Um, anyway, so anyway, because it was so expensive, I thought. I'll buy a really cheap laptop, you know, used laptop, really cheap. Um, and if I go outside, I don't know if I'm going on a bike ride, I can just chuck it into my rucksack and um, I don't really have to care about it getting a bit damaged or um, if I lose it, it's not going to be the end of the world, you know, it's not, it's not such a big deal. Um, so yeah, just a simple laptop for doing, I don't know, maybe like um, some note taking Maybe I can transcribe my podcasts when I'm in the, the park, uh, do a bit of studying on the laptop, maybe. Um, what else? A bit of, a bit of programming, a bit of coding, um, maybe. So, um, yeah, I got it for those reasons. I got it. I got it because, because I <laughs> made the silly decision of buying a very, very expensive laptop that I'm now a bit afraid of taking outside the house. But that's not the only reason that I bought it. The other reason is because I wanted to play around with another operating system. Now, if you don't know what an operating system is, you've all used one before. Um, if you're, you know, if you've got a phone, if you've got a smartphone, 
um, if you've got a laptop computer, if you've got a desktop computer, they're all running an operating system. And I'm sure you've heard of operating systems. Windows is an operating system. iOS uh, that runs on iPhones. Um, Android running on Android phones. Um, Mac OS runs on Mac laptops and desktop machines. And then there's the other one that probably maybe no one listening to this podcast has heard of before. And it's called Linux. But I'm almost certain that all of you have in some way interacted with Linux. Um, And the reason is that most of the servers on the internet, so you know when you type in a website uh, address, it contacts a server, which is, you know, just a a computer, and, and it sends the website back to your computer. That's a server. Most of them on the internet, I don't know, it's probably like greater than 80%, I should have looked up the statistics, but a really high percentage of it, the majority of servers on the internet run on this Linux operating system. But you don't have to run it just on a server. It will also run on a desktop computer. It will also run on a laptop. And it sort of runs on phones, but I won't go into detail there because it will get a bit technical. So anyway, I have bought this cheap laptop. And when I say cheap, I picked it up for around... A uh, hundred pounds, um, so you know that's a, a lot cheaper than my two thousand um, pound MacBook Pro laptop. Um, and then I've upgraded it, like I've um, upgraded the hard drive inside, so I have more storage space. I've upgraded the RAM, the memory, um, and it, that's cost me about another uh, one hundred pounds. Oh, and the battery as well. So it's like new battery, new hard drive, new RAM, and in total. £200. And I've put Linux on this laptop, and that cost me £0, um, because Linux is a free operating system that anyone can download and install on their computer, but you have to know a little bit about computers in order to do so. Anyway, I wanted to install it because I wanted to see the progress that had been made um, in with this operating system and all of the software that runs on it. So going back a long time now, um, probably over 10 years now, I used to run this operating system, this Linux operating system, um, on my computer as my main operating system. So that means turn my computer on and Linux appears. There was no Windows on there, there's no Mac OS on there. And I think I, think I ran this for a, a, over five years, I would say, easily over five years before I ended up moving on to Mac computers and since then I've sort of just had like had an interest in Linux like I've looked at it every now and again just to see how it's um, progressing like installed it and had a play around with it and see how it's progressing but the reason I've never truly sort of left it alone the reason I keep coming back to it is because it's my favorite operating system I would say for someone like me who's, um, shall we say, a bit geeky um, and certainly, like, technically minded, Uh, I really like uh, being able to tinker around. Um, Tinkering sort of means, like, playing around uh, with something, but, like, tweaking things, altering uh, settings and and things. So you can tinker around with a a motorbike if you're good with uh, mechanics and engines and things like that. I, I like tweaking or tinkering, (laughs) like tinkering around with an operating system. And uh, Linux is very good for letting you do that. So that's one of the reasons I really like it. But perhaps, I mean, this might be the main reason, is like the philosophy, the idea, the ideals um, behind a free operating system like Linux. So let's take Microsoft Windows, for example, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Uh, That's made by... Microsoft. Um, Linux is made by everyone. It's really quite uh, amazing how many companies contribute code uh, to the Linux project. There are thousands and thousands. And amongst them are some really big companies. Microsoft, for example, gives code for free to the Linux project. Um, Google also does that. Apple, a little bit. 
Um, but all of these major tech companies contribute code, as do individuals, you know, just people like me. They contribute code too. So everyone is just working on this thing, making it better, and it's being released for free so that everyone can benefit from it. And I really, really like that idea. There's something about that, like philosophy, that way of thinking, that I just think is great. I really like it when everyone works together to make something and the end result is something that can benefit everyone. I think that's great. So anyway, I have been running this um, Linux operating system on my new old laptop. Um, And this laptop is, I think it's from 2016. So, you know, it's a little bit old. Um, It was, it was never amazing when I, you know, when it was new, it was never like an amazingly fast laptop. Um, But I've been surprised. I've been very surprised, actually, when I'm using uh, this, this little laptop, this Linux laptop, um, this cheap Linux laptop, I don't actually find it that much slower than my very, very expensive MacBook. Obviously, it's going to depend what you're doing. I mean, I, I don't edit videos on my computer. I mean, I mostly do programming for my job, but the kind of programming I do doesn't really need um, you know, really fast computer or anything. So when I'm working on this, on this cheap little computer, I don't really feel like it's moving slowly. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because it sort of makes me think like, hmm, maybe I should have just bought a really cheap computer, stuck Linux on it, and uh, perhaps I could have saved myself a lot of money, you know, like (laughs) £1,800 I could have saved, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. It's probably not that simple, you know, not that black and white. There are a lot of differences between these two laptops. I mean, my MacBook has this lovely, lovely screen and excellent speakers and so on and so on. And this other laptop is, um, the screen's reasonable. You know, it's not not too bad. The speakers are the worst speakers I've ever heard um, by far. Uh, But, you know, if if you put headphones in, then it's okay. I'll tell you one thing um, that's amazing about this used laptop. Uh, It's weight. It weighs about 700 and something um, grams. Grams. Wow. Um, this, my, my MacBook is around 1.6 kilograms. So about twice the weight, really. And you really notice it um, when you're traveling with it. So I, just, I can just throw this little lightweight, cheap laptop into my bag I barely notice it's there, you know, around 700 grams. You don't really notice that kind of weight so much. So because of that, I've been taking it out a lot more with me. I've been using it in all kinds of places that I wouldn't normally take a laptop because it's light, because it's cheap, because it feels fast, doesn't feel slow. Even the battery life seems good as well. And it's been inspiring me to uh, do some programming, to get back into programming a bit because... um, as you know, as you probably know, um, I do programming every day from my job. Um, but that's... It's programming, yes. But it's... Um, I don't enjoy it as much, to be honest, as if I'm programming for myself. That's, like, completely different. When you're programming for yourself, I, I think it's similar to, like, a, an artist who's looking at a blank canvas. You know, a canvas is what an artist paints on. Um, and just saying, like, what shall I paint? And it could be anything. Or an author who's looking at a blank page and it's like, what shall I write? What book do I want to create? Create What kind of story? It can be anything. It's sort of like that with programming. You just have a blank screen. It's like, what program? What software? What application am I going to make? Um, so yeah, I think it's quite a creative process. Um, quite a creative thing. But um, obviously, if someone else is saying, please do this, please change this, please do that, um, then that's not quite the same thing. So I don't tend to enjoy um, that kind of programming as much, but doing it for myself, that's what I really enjoy. And uh, that's that's why I got this little laptop, really, just to sort of get away from my sort of work machine, you know, the machine I do the most work on. And so far it's been working. I have been programming again. I've been getting back into it and I've been really enjoying it. It's um, It's been a long time since I've done any, any programming for myself. 
Um, and it's partly thanks to this little cheap laptop and thanks to Linux, my favorite operating system. And when I use this free operating system, I usually feel inspired to try and create something free that I can give away uh, to people. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. But maybe that's a topic uh, for another episode, as this episode is getting quite long. Anyway, thank you for listening to the end of this episode. And um, I'm sorry if it was a little bit too technical for you. I do try to... um, try not to speak too much about um, geeky things to you, but um, I hope it's been interesting for you and good listening practice. Until next time, bye-bye. This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, the dating app to find someone you can be yourself with. Why doesn't eHarmony allow copy and paste in first messages? Because you are unique and your conversations should reflect that. eHarmony wants you to find someone who will get you. How are you going to know who gets you? If people send you the same generic conversation starters, they message everyone else. Conversations that actually help you get to know each other. Imagine that. Get who gets you on eHarmony. Sign up today. A lot can happen in three years. Like a chatbot may be your new best friend. But what won't change? Needing health insurance. United Healthcare Tri-Term Medical Plans, underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage that lasts nearly three years in some states. Learn more at UH1.com. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. That's what you'll feel with Bowl and Branch's best-selling signature sheets in 100% organic cotton. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bowl and Branch sheets get softer with every wash. Start getting your best night's sleep in sheets that get softer and softer for years to come. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee. Plus, get 15% off your first order at bowlandbranch.com. Code BUTTERY. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Thanks for listening until the very end of the show. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give my podcast a rating, or if you have the time, write a review. It's a really nice way of letting me know you enjoy these episodes and encourages me to make more of them for you. Thanks very much and have a lovely day.